welcome everyone um, to this last webinar of New Bias Academy of the Year. Uh, we're very happy <clears throat> to have you here for Enjoy, Enjoy webinar. Uh, and we're super excited because now we had, we've had almost 30 webinars throughout this uh, pandemic time. Uh, it's super great, but we're looking for topics to continue and the ways to continue since the pandemic is sort of um, slowing down. So before we go to the webinar, uh, we will share one link with you if you can open it already and then um, suggest to us what kind of uh, events would you like to see next year in the future and what type of topics you would like us to cover. Um, that would be great. So, um, yes. Uh, today we have with us Wei Uyong, who's a researcher in KTH in Stockholm, and he's specialized in deep learning um, image analysis. And uh, he's also the leading developer of the platform Enjoy and also the bioimage model Zoo. Um, and as a moderator, we have Trang Le from uh, KTH Stockholm, from the same lab uh, of Professor Emma Lundberg, and uh, four of us from New Bias Academy uh, to help with answering your questions. So please be active um, and ask all your questions in the Q&A window, and then we will, we will try to answer all of them. Uh, this video will be recorded and then it will be also available on YouTube channel and the questions uh, together with answers we will put later on the image SC forum. So um, welcome Wei and uh, I'll just uh, stop sharing my screen so you can start. Thank you. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. So yeah, I think it's a great pleasure to uh, do this webinar. I think it's um, New Vice has a great lineup uh, of like you said thirty webinars. I think they're great. So it's a great pleasure to you know contribute our uh, introduction to Enjoy. So today I'm gonna. Um, basically focus on the introduction of MJOY um, about deep learning based image analysis. And um, also because we work a lot on the web environment based in the browser. Um, and also I'm gonna introduce you some of the latest development we have been working on about uh, model serving from the server side, for example. Um, yeah, so please feel free to uh, ask questions and, uh, you know, interrupt if needed. So, um, yeah, so there will be three uh, main topic, which I'm gonna focus on, three parts. The first one is introduction to Enjoy. I'm gonna give a brief introduction and with some demos later on. And then basically I will kind of show a demo step-by-step -step to show you how to develop your own Enjoy plugin, and then use our uh, recent server called BioEngine to show you how to train your own deep learning models and work with the Enjoy plugin. So I'm gonna, I would like to start with this, uh, you know, a list of trains in bioimage analysis. So everyone knows that deep learning has becoming kind of a dominant approach used by bioimage analysis. It's super powerful. Um, and um, man, most of them use UNET, for example, if you talk about image segmentation of the classification models. Um, and the models actually becoming, there's also a trend to be, use big models, um, sometimes even massive models. And there's a special type is called transformers, which are originally used for natural language processing. And now it's trying to find its own kind of place in image analysis as well. So this is definitely a trend to observe. And 
besides that, of course, everyone trying to work with massive data sets and not on a laptop, but definitely you want to store those data on a server. And also in, for example, scalable file formats such as SAR, M5, and then NGFF from the uh, OME team, for example, they have this nature method recent paper uh, about this. So a lot of exciting trend in the community. Um, there's a lot of challenges uh, which we try to focus on for self in terms of um, in, I mean, a lot of challenges in AI specifically um, for bioimage analysis. So here's just a few of them. Uh, for example, usability, right? We want to build software which is usable, user-friendly. You want a GUI to operate on, but it's challenging because you, in the meantime, you need a lot of storage and compute power. Uh, you want a lot of flexibility um, because you want to try to handle very different data types, right? So, and these two often conflicting to each other. If you want to have a lot of flexibility and the GUI becomes complex, right? And so we, we in the end, we're gonna show a demo to how I see as a potential way to address this kind of problem. Uh, but there's also interactivity. You want to uh, annotate the data, especially images and scalability, which is also a major issue because you want to work with remote storage and um, compute resources. Um, there's also privacy, which is also important if you work with uh, biomedical images. Um, but in the meantime, there's a lot of opportunities in the web with the web, right? Because we have a cloud computing, basically you have unlimited storage and compute power. Basically, you just need a credit card if you use Amazon, this kind of uh, cloud service, right? Um, and there's a lot of a modern UI framework for building beautiful web pages, but also mobile apps and the kind of uh, in the web is very kind of matured ecosystem. And there's also exciting development in the web standard, for example, web assembly, web GPU, this enables very powerful computation in the browser. For example, later you will show that we essentially have the scientific libraries, NumPy, SciPy, Python, entirely run in the browser. So this is also exciting. Um, there's also scalable storage such as S3, which typically used with, for example, ZAR and this kind of file format, right? Um, and so one thing we try to focus on to build a progress web app, um, so Imjoy is essentially a progress web app and it has very nice features. For example, you can work with a uh, rich in interactive UI, but in the meantime, it's not just like standard web application. It can also work offline. Basically, you don't need the internet to run Imjoy plugins, for example. Uh, and you can also do computation in the browser plus the cloud, right? So for example, with this, what I just mentioned in the earlier about the web assembly and web GPU is gonna be super powerful to do image analysis in the browser, right? So the browser is essentially becoming kind of a uh, operating system itself. When combined with cloud computation resources, it's, it's a super powerful combination. Uh, this is the basic framework of Enjoy. So basically we have this progress web app. Uh, app. So it's accessible from this Enjoy.io, um, yeah. And then it's a plugin from based framework, heavily inspired by, for example, ImageJ, right? Um, so you can develop plugins for it, but we also support multiple languages, Python, Java, JavaScript, for example, and it can be extendable to other languages with the help of, for example, WebAssembly. But in the meantime, we can also, um, our recent development have been shifted to the um, server side. So because we think that's the way to solve the scalability issue. Um, so specifically what we have been working on is this uh, for production to deploy Mjoy plugin. We have been working on this Mjoy app engine uh, to allow deployment of uh, Mjoy plugin to the cloud with the help of Kubernetes um, and also uh, in collaboration with uh, Craig from EBI um, working on the binder deployment. Um, but in the meantime, this kind of cloud solution gonna also work on prime deployment, for example, in your institution, in your institution or your kind of lab or workstation, for example. 
Um, I just want to briefly mention a few key concepts which uh, within Enjoy. So the first one is the every plugin is sandboxed, right? So it's, they are either Docker container or sandboxed, uh, you know, plugin environment uh, in the browser, right? And they talk to each other through this technique called a remote procedure calls. It's a bit technique basically enables transparent function call between plugin across language, programming language, I mean, and also across the location. If you have a plugin running in the cloud, another one in your browser, right? And the other thing is the workflow composition through this uh, technique called uh, asynchronous programming. Uh, this enables very flexible uh, workflow composition and then open integration. So this is have been, we have been focusing on such that you can easily integrate Enjoy with other software, with other website, et cetera. So you're gonna see this. I'm gonna briefly show you, um, for example, the first one is um, how we do remote procedure calls, right? So basically on the left side, you have an Enjoy plugin uh, in Python. It runs in the cloud. When I click run, it's actually this code gonna send to a server in the cloud through my binder, which is a free Jupyter notebook service. We use it for our backend, for example. Um, and you can see this activity going on. It's actually requested a Docker container. It's gonna install the Enjoy um, libraries, and then it's gonna run this uh, plugin for you. But then, yeah, so now it's ready. And then on the right, you have a JavaScript plugin. Uh, what we try to demonstrate is that in this, right? So you can get the plugin based on its name. It's called Python plugin on the left side. When you get in, you can call the function called add. And this is the add, how the add define. Now it's basically you add two numbers together. And as you can see, you can just call this function as if it's defined in JavaScript. And if I click run here, it's create a user interface in JavaScript. And when I click this button and this computation is essentially done in this Python plugin in the cloud. So as you can see that we have this RPC core which make it transparent to uh, do computation remotely or in, or in the browser with another plugin. So uh, the other concept I want to briefly illustrate is this asynchronous workflow composition. And so basically it's a technique allows you to do flexible, for example, if you want to schedule um, two process, right? You have two plugin, they have function called process and you have two inputs. So if you add this a wait before, it means that it will wait until this um, process function finish and you get the output. And then you're gonna wait again. So as you can see that it's sequential, right? Because you only execute the second line until the first process is finished. Um, and this is a sequential process, but what if you want to do run these two process in parallel, right? So what you can do is that instead of, you don't add this await, it, so it will not return the actual output, but it will uh, return an object called promise. And this is basically just like you, for example, you order coffee and you, know, you get the ticket, right? With the ticket, and then you can get the output. So this is exactly what we do. We kind of order two coffee, right? And then we got two tickets. So this is simultaneous, you don't need to wait. And then later you wait this two ticket and then you get your actual coffee, for example, right? And then, so as you can see that in this kind of way, you can easily by, by um, adding this await, where to add this await, and you can make them sequential or concurrent. And imagine these two plugins on two computers in the cloud, right? And then you can do parallel, parallelization, right? So this kind of uh, just, um, a demo on this, how you can um, have a flexible way of doing workflow composition. And the other thing I want to uh, briefly show you is that uh, what we call open integration. So basically, Enjoy plugin doesn't necessarily to be only working in Enjoy. So what I'm showing you here right now is that is this web application, Kaibu, which will, you will see later. It itself is a um, standalone web application. You can open this link and use it as in standalone mode. 
But if you place it in another Enjoy plugin, just like this, the code you are seeing here is basically part of the Enjoy plugin. And you can call this create fun, uh, window and then you can pass the URL and, and it, it turns this Kaibu web application, it becomes an Enjoy plugin. And then you can access the function inside this um, web application, for example, view image or add a annotation layer. And if I click run here, and you basically see that you can uh, customize this behavior by adding this uh, image layer, and then you have this annotation layer, and then you can easily do annotation, right? So basically, um, with these three lines, right, you can make an annotation tool, essentially. Of course, you need some um, more code if you want to do more complex stuff. Um, and I will just go through um, quickly a few demos but feel free to interrupt me if you have questions. Um, so the first demo I want to show you is this visualization with Visa, a tool developed by Trevor. And um, he, yeah, so the Visa is basically a very powerful tool to visualize ZA images. If you're familiar with ZA, it's a scalable um, file format for large images such as this one. When you zoom in, the corresponding chunks will pull into the browser. So this is an, uh, one of the Enjoy plugin which you can use in your uh, work, workflow, for example. Um, the other thing I want to show you is the uh, one of the other work we have been working on is called Interactive Annotation Tool. Uh, together with Chan, um, you know, we made this tool. Um, so the idea is that we use this Kaibu as a viewer, image viewer, and then um, basically we do annotation inside the Kaibu plugin. And then in another plugin, you can do, for example, run a training of deep learning models. Specifically, we use cell post to train this model in the background. So we have a collab demo um, I think if you watch one of the past uh, New Bias Academy uh, video, you will see this one of this demo. So basically you have a collab running the um, cell post training code and simultaneously the user will annotate. And then the idea is that you first use this cell post to make a prediction. And then you, if the prediction is not perfect and then you correct it, and then you send back the corrected annotation to the model and then you train it again. So you can uh, continuously improve and then get a sense of how it works. So this is a just quick uh, movie showing you how it works in Colab. Um, and it's, it's uh, fast forwarded. So you can quickly see how it works. So you have a four images initially in the training set. And then we just start the training loop and you can see the loss. And then the idea is first click this button called predict. And this is the prediction. And the result is not perfect. And then you kind of modify it. For example, in this case, we just cut two cells stick to, together into two. And then you send back for training. You get another image, you make prediction, and then you make correction. And then you also, you know, you just keep doing this. And then until you, the model, um, you know, satisfies what you would like to achieve, for example. Uh, you just add new annotation in this case. Um, and then, so th this essential, the advantage of doing this is that it makes it much faster and it gives you a kind of a sense of when is enough, right? Because otherwise, if you do it offline, you don't know how much training data is enough. And also um, there are other issues, for example, and this is also good for uh, building trust between AI models and uh, the human user, right? So. Uh, yeah, so feel free to, if you want to um, use this and feel free to search this uh, Enjoy Interactive Annotation, you'll find this F1000 paper uh, under the New Bias Gateway um, in F1000. So I'm gonna skip that. So there are a few other uh, demos I want to show is, for example, not only do image analysis, but after you extract the features, for example, and we also have a tool to allows you to do interactive chats, right? So you, you basically make plot. So this code snippet uh, basically tells you, you based, again, you call a create, um, you know, window, 
And then similar to the Kaibu, you pass another link, which is chat.imjoy.io. And then essentially turn this web application into an Imjoy plugin. And with this plugin object, you can call the function in the application. For example, in this case, we just load a CSV file, right? So this is a CSV file hosted on Dropbox, right? So if you run this code, then you can see uh, this interface with, um, for example, and here is essentially a UMAP. For example, you have, you can do a scatter plot, for example, and the table is preloaded. So you can select uh, define the X and Y. So this X and Y is the column names in this CSV table, right? Uh, and then the nice thing is, for example, you can easily uh, customize the color based on another column, for example, location code. And then you can easily make this kind of a scatter plot. And then you can, um, and the other thing is that we, with the Enjoy plugin, you can also register a callback when uh, the user cursor kind of hover on this uh, point, right? So then we have, you have this information layer where you can hover and you can see the image and you can also click, right? And then the, in the click event, you can, in this case, we fetch an image from the human protein atlas uh, and then you can see the corresponding image. So some of them are broken because they don't, uh, they are not available anymore, but most of them are, available and then you can see different information. Uh, yeah, so this kind of uh, uh, interactive tool is very useful. For example, exploring, for example, single cell data or, uh, or just a feature map or features produced by another neural network, for example, right? For example, your segmentation um, feature, morphological feature, you can visualize in this way. And then with this kind of information layer, you can go back to the cells, for example. And this entire thing is also an Imjoy plugin, which you can control through the API just like this, for example, load. And you can also have some other API function you can customize. Um, and then, I mean, what you are already seeing, what an, the annotation, sorry, the, the presentation tool is called Imjoy Slice. Uh, it's available at slice.imjoy.io. And you can also use it to make interactive slides. And for example, you can run Mjoy plugins within your presentation. And we're gonna see um, another demo later with image JavaScript, but just briefly uh, introduce you what is image JavaScript. So this is one of our most popular um, service because it's also linked to the uh, original NIH image J website. So what we did is that we take the image, which is in Java, compiled into JavaScript, use a tool called ChapJ, and then it basically enables running image in the browser. Um, and it's also support tablet and mobile phones, which the original image cannot support, for example. And you can share a macro through an URL, for example, and you can easily integrate with the web application and it's suitable for teaching and you will see it later. But uh, let me just quickly show you, for example, a link, right? Uh, you just click on the link. For example, you want to share a workflow, a macro with others. Um, yeah, so this is a macro made by Jerome. Um, and he's kind of, if you know, he is very active in the MJ community. So what this does is that in the URL, we encode a, uh, a, make, a macro, right, in this string and then you can see when I open it, it basically runs this entire analysis on segmentation and then also produce this area, for example. So this is very useful for um, repro sorry, <laughs> I think I closed my, um, sorry, slice, yes. Um, so this is very useful for sharing and also put in a paper, for example, if you want to publish uh, with some macro, for example. Um, and then for teaching, for example, it's also very useful because you can share the slides with the students. And then, for example, if you want to teach uh, image a macro, right? On the left window, you're gonna have a list of uh, image a macro. And then if you run, and then it's gonna run on the right side. And then you, here is a basic macro for um, doing, uh, segmentation, right? And you just take a binary and then analyze and you can modify it, right? The student can modify it. If they made some mistake, right? Some syntax error, 
If they run it again, you're gonna get this syntax error, right? Um, so this is a very useful to do interactive annotation and share with the student um, um, uh, if you want to teach image and macro, for example. But this is just one uh, example. Um, Imjoy itself, we also, and there are many ways to use Imjoy, one including use it. We have extensions for Jupyter Notebooks, CoLab, and also Jupyter Lab, for example, and you can easily run and develop your Enjoy plugins in Jupyter Notebooks, for example. And it enables this kind of, for example, 3D visualization what I'm showing you here right now. Um, and then we have uh, a growing list of uh, uh, plugins, different of them. I'm gonna, I, I already showed you most of them, um, but then just a list that showing you the different ways of running Enjoy. You can go to this Enjoy.io there's also a light version, right, which is smaller than this, faster to load. And then we have this VS Code extension. This is a new. Um, I'm going to show you later how to use it. Basically, you go to this website and you're going to open a VS Code. If for users familiar with this, you're going to, I think you're going to like it because uh, VS Code is very powerful IDE for developers. And we have an extension to support running Enjoy plugins there. We have also Jupyter Lite, so jupyter.imjoy.io. And this is a Jupyter notebook running in the browser, powered by this WebAssembly and essentially a PyODite project, which enables running Python directly in the browser. So you don't need to run any local server or remote server for Jupyter notebooks, just run in the browser, right? Go to this link, you're gonna have it. And this, we're gonna also show it in the uh, first uh, demo later. And there's also collab. And so basically use pip install Enjoy, and then you're gonna be able to uh, run Enjoy plugins in Google Colab. We have notebook extension, Jupyter Lab extension, for example, but this is just different ways of part of our open integration. So the user have, can use it uh, everywhere, for example. Um, I'm gonna show you this demo, uh, showing you how to develop your own Enjoy plugin. Um, Let's see, yeah. So for this part, I'm gonna, um, so the conventional way of doing this is you go to enjoy.io and then you can start, uh, you know, create the plugins. But I'm gonna, for today, I'm gonna show you another way of doing this is basically uh, we have this, sorry, enjoy uh, team. If you go to this website, I made this tutorial enjoy tutorials so this is a tutorial repository which i added a few kind of plugins and you can so to to try this out you just press the dot key right with this and then github will have essentially this uh, vs code integration it will open vs code for you so this is a GitHub VS Code, right? So it automatically load everything in this repository and you have this, for example, this is an Enjoy plugin, right? Um, and I have two folder. For the first part, you only focus on the folder called Wine Plugin Development. And then for the first time, if you load it, you will need to install two extension and you should be able to see then uh, the first one is Enjoy, and the other one is VS Code PyODite. And you can just in click install. And here, because I already installed, so I don't see. Otherwise, you're gonna see a install button. You just click, and then or here, right? Something like this. You you just need to install this Enjoy extension, and then you will be able to use it. And after that, you go to this file, open this folder, um, and then you can just uh, look at this. So. This is an Enjoy plugin, right? So this is the code of an Enjoy plugin. Uh, you have config field, which is a JSON um, file uh, with some kind of a meta information for the plugin. For example, the important part is this name and then also the type. So we have different types uh, depending on different program language. For example, if you use JavaScript, use this web worker plugin uh, type. Um, and then the other part is this, um, you know, I can close this one. And then you have this script block. This is the 
kind of core part of your plugin. And so this is a very simple plugin, which does nothing, but you know, it will cause an API called prompt. So it will ask you for an input. Uh, for example, if you want to ask the user, what's your name, right? Is your name. And then you're gonna get the name which user types, and then you're gonna uh, alert, show an alert message box, say hello, this plus this name, right? So in order to run it, uh, you can click here. In the bottom, you have this run Enjoy plugin. If you click here and on the side, you're gonna see this Enjoy opening and you can see that it's already pop up. What is your name, right? I say Ray, right? And then press enter. And then it shows me this hello way, right? So this is essentially, so we just made our first uh, plugin with very simple features. Um, yeah, and then you can just, um, we can open another one. The second one I want to show you is the IT critical viewer for 3D visualization. Um, yeah, so this is an also an Enjoy plugin called IT critical viewer. If you, uh, as I said, this is also a standalone uh, Enjoy standalone web application. If you just open the link, right, what you see is a um, you know you can open a local image. I don't know. Um, I, I will I will skip this, but basically you can open a local image and then visualize it. So it's a standalone web application. But in order to make it an Enjoy plugin, you can just uh, pass the URL uh, to this right uh, to this API dot create window. So in this case, we have a Python. So essentially, this is Python. Um, I think VS Code has some difficulty in detecting the um, Python language in this, but doesn't matter. But this is essentially just Python, right? And we import this NumPy, um, and then we, in this setup function, we uh, create this random uh, NumPy array with this shape, 10 by 10 by 10. So it's a 3D image array, right? And then we use this uh, create a viewer, with this ITK VTK viewer, and then we call a function called set image, right? So how do you know there's a function called set image? Because, uh, because you're gonna see it from the website, right? So here, this is the ITK VTK viewer website. In the viewer, you can find the documentation and you can find a set image function, right? So it's already um, described the set image function, um, I think, it's in the, you can, if you read this documentation, you will find out the set, uh, the set image function is available here, right? Um, and also importantly, this plugin with type called native Python. And in this case, it's gonna launch this plugin on my binder. So basically it will launch a remote server. So yeah, this, I, I can also click here, say run plugin, right? And yeah, so so what it does is that it's gonna launch this plugin by launching a server first on the MyBinder website. Um, yeah, so just quickly show you, this is MyBinder, right? MyBinder, so this is a website to launch Jupyter Notebooks and we just use it and you don't, and yeah, so so I launch it and then you can see this is what we did. We created an ITK VTK viewer and we also passed this image array with 10 by 10 by 10 with random pixels, right, from zero to 255. And then this is what exactly what you are seeing here right now. And you have a 3D volume. Um, yeah, so basically if you have um, volumetric data, you can do the same, right? So I just for, uh, just make it quick and I just show it uh, 10 by 10 by 10, but you can, you can see that it's, uh, you can just display a volumetric data with this. Um, and the other example, I'm gonna close this one, this plugin window, right? And then I'm gonna go to another one, which is um, Kaibu annotation. So I think you already see it in the slides. Um, you can also drag this here. So you have a side by side. You can also close this. Um, the same, you just click here, right? So what, what we did here is the Kaibu annotation tool. So in this case, we what we did is that we, have this Kaibu app, right? So if you open this, what you're gonna see is the Kaibu standalone web application. So this is the Kaibu web application, right? 
So how to use it as an Imgur plugin, right? You click the documentation and you will see how, how exactly you can use it for uh, Imgur. So basically you have this, um, um, you know, Kaibu API documentation. And so if you want to use it, right? So you can go through this basic usage. So basically you pass the URL here, either in create a window or show dialog, right? So you can even try it here because this is also, because this documentation is also interactive documentation with Imjoy built-in. So basically you can run it and you can even edit the codes here, right? If you want to do some testing, right? Um, for example, what we are doing here is that we create a viewer first and then we view an image from the human protein loss, right? If you want to switch another image, you can just change it and then you say run. And then you're gonna have this viewer here, right? Um, but essentially this same code, you can, you can go back to here um, and then you can use it here, right? So for example, you can, uh, sorry, I think I'm going to the wrong one. This is the one we were just looking at. Um, yeah, so here, for example, um, in this case, we work with JavaScript because it's a web worker type. So this is JavaScript. So you just need to notice that the in the documentation, sometimes we have Python, right? So you have Python or JavaScript. So in this case, if you want to create a JavaScript plugin, you just click on the JavaScript side. And basically you can just copy and paste this code also to make it work inside here, right? So basically copy the code here, for example, if you do it here, right? And then say, I want to uh, run this plugin, you just click here. And then you have the, this window open here, right? Uh, but it doesn't enable annotation. This is because we only add this image layer. There's no annotation layer. So in order to add this annotation layer, so you just read through this, right? Um, shapes, it's got shapes layer. Um, yeah, so this is, you have a function called add shapes. Uh, so you, again, you can see this example, but this is in Python. Um, doesn't matter because we gonna, we just change it to JavaScript, right? And then it, you need to rewrite a little bit and, but you can just, uh, for example, add a new line here. And, th but this is like a Python, uh, you know, style. I need to change it to JavaScript style, which is basically like this. Um, and then change Python to JavaScript, right? So this is the JavaScript. Um, and then here is the uh, shape, initial shape. I don't have one, I just put it empty. Um, and then I can just modify it and then run it, for example, um, yeah. So then if I run it, you see, we have this triangle layer. So this is what we define, it's called triangle and it's empty, but I can just add a new shapes here, right? Um, yeah, so, so you can see a lot of examples here in this API documentation. I want to quickly point you through, um, for example, you can add buttons, right? Control, what we call control, control widget, for example. And, in, and you can add a few buttons. Uh, no, yeah, so this, if you click this, because this is a Python plugin and it will launch on the my binder. So you need to wait for some seconds to, until it uh, established. Um, and then you can also create form. You have, we have very rich form UI, which you can use to uh, get inputs from the user. Um, and then let's see, we, I'm gonna quickly show you, let's see, this is also Python. This is also, we, you can also show a file tree you can show a chart and there's a lot of API you can go through, but I'm gonna show you this one. Yeah, so now it's ready. So for example, you have two buttons, right? So what essentially what you do is that you say call this function viewer.addWidget and you say type is control and then you add a type which is a button. The button have the label called say hello. This is the say hello. You have a callback function and this function defined as alert hello, right? So when you click and then you're gonna get this message because we have this, um, you know, callback function set. So just to give you a bit idea, right? So if you load an image and you have a button say process, right? 
essentially what you just need to change this function to process and here change to process and then here you just do a segmentation classification or all kinds of you know and you just do whatever you want in the ui right um so i think i would have need to wrap up because i we're gonna show it later as well um let me just show you quickly if i have other examples okay so i'm gonna switch from a vs code but vs code if you like this kind of environment you can just stick with this environment i'm gonna show you another way of de uh, developing android plugins which is um if you go to this uh, jupyter light jupyter jupyter.mjoy.io right and this is um a jupyter light running in the browser so you don't need to start any jupyter notebook server or anything it doesn't connect to a uh, server by um you know by default but what it essentially it allows is that it runs python in the browser right you can create a new notebook uh, but it has less compute power because it just runs in the browser. But for most of the stuff we do, it's already enough. But I'm gonna quickly show you a few examples. Uh, for example, the same one which we uh, did before about ITK Vitka Viewer. Um, and here, the advantage is that you can do inline uh, plugin display. So basically, for example, this is the same demo you have seen before. You create a random 3D volume and then you create this uh, window plugin. You have the viewer, you call this function called set image. And then you just, uh, if, for example, if shift enter, and then you're gonna get this in line, right? This is great for development because you change and then, you know, um, you can then, uh, you know, for example, I change it to 20, right? And then you get this result immediately, right? And then there are other, you know, you can also slide through siding. So this is, uh, you can also change the intensity, right? So, and, but this is just an um, um, enhancement for Mjoy. If you just make sure when you run this Mjoy plugins and you need to make sure you see this icon, that means it's load the extension because otherwise you won't see this uh, window here. Um, this is one example. The other one is, uh, sorry, I'm gonna open this. Uh, the other one I want to show you is this Visa demo. So basically enables um, showing, because one question, right? How do you deal with, because you work in the browser, how do you deal with massive data set, right? So this example shows you with this kind of ZAR file format um, or interface, Enjoy can support this kind of a display or annotation on a massive data set, or for example, tissue, uh, images, for example, right? So this is just a quick demo. Um, I converted from the Visa uh, example, and then you can quickly show that here we just define a function called re run Visa. So essentially wrap an Enjoy plugin, and it calls this uh, Enjoy plugin called Visa, right? If you open this Visa, it's just uh, this uh, web application, right? Um, so we just wrap it as a plugin by calling this api.create window, you get a viewer, then you set the, you can add image to the viewer, right? So basically you run this, and here we just create an OMEZA, or now it's called a NGFF file format. So here we just create a uh, multi-resolution pyramid as an example, okay? So this is just an example. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how to, let's say, for your own data, you already have this, so you don't need to do this. But here, for demonstration purposes, we just uh, create an example ZAR file. Okay, so this is the NGFF uh, file format. So here, you use ZAR to open this um, NGFF file, right? It's a multi resolution astronaut uh, image. So then, because we defined this run visa earlier with this Enjoy plugin, so now you can basically just um, get the image and then you just visualize it in your browser. Um, so that here is the, the difference is that if you have a massive image, right? When you zoom in, the corresponding chunks will be loaded into the browser. If you watch here, the black, it means it's a sending data, right? If I browse it through another region, right? You can see it's blink. So it means it's that dynamically pull the chunks to the browser 
uh, when based on the uh, visualization behavior, right? So which view you are looking at. So this is the way to scale, right? So if you have a massive data you want to visualize, you need to do this kind of uh, use visa plugin. Um, we have also some work on, you know, working on the Kaibu to support this, but it's not supported right now. Um, but for now, Wiz are supported. There's also ongoing work in the ITK Vitka viewer to support this. There's already support, but not the NGFF file format yet. So, but it's gonna come soon, I, I think. Um, yeah, so this is the, um, I think this is the demos I want to show for the first part. Uh, let's see if I have anything left. So I think that's it for the first part. Um, I think we can pause, um, you know, for questions, if you have any question about development of plugin in MJoy or anything related to MJoy, uh, yeah, feel free to. Yeah, I think there's this one interesting question. It says that in many examples, the data needs to be transferred to web servers. What, uh, what about the local data or local intranet web servers? Uh, yeah, so so that's a good question. Um, so let me see how, how to answer this question. So the the thing is, um, so it's not exactly because, because this is for demonstration purpose, right? We because we want something reproducible, so we use a lot of URL in the demo. But um, in fact, you can, for example, if you run through this, um, you know, if you use, let's see, which demo I showed, for example. Let's see. For example, this ITK VTK viewer is native Python, right? And this means you can connect to your local Jupyter notebook, uh, which runs on your own computer or another workstation, right? So there you have your data and you have your, you know, um, you have your compute together and Enjoy plugin just provide an interface for it. So in that case, you have no problem of transferring data, but for other cases where you have, let's say you run your compute in a remote server and then you have your interface here. And we do have some API to allows you to upload your uh, local data, right? So you can, for example, in the Kaibu example, there's a files, right? So for example, we have this uh, files widget allows you to build an UI where you can select a local files, right? And then in your code, you can say, uh, send to the server and then run it, right? So I think for 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 that particular question, we will also uh, see it in the second part and see how we deal with that, you know, local file and remote compute, basically. Yeah, so is that... Um, Thanks. Uh, yeah, one more question. Do you have uh, documentations on implementing Enjoy plugins? Oh uh, yes, yes. I, I think I forgot to show this, but uh, here you can see Enjoy slash docs. Basically, you have this documentation, and you have a quick start. Um, and then I think one one tutorial I recommend is this I two K workshop tutorial. If you go to tutorials, click I two K right and click here, and then here you have this uh, plugin development in step by step and a very complete. Uh, tutorial, this is what I recommend. But for more complete, you know, API documentation, you can see this Enjoy API, right? And you can see all the API function we expose from Enjoy where you can call. For example, you have seen a lot about api.create window, right? You can find it here. Uh, this is the api.create window and you can see full documentation about this. Yeah, just feel free to browse through the Enjoy slash docs. But a lot of other features, uh, which I'm gonna show later, is not documented yet. But you know, we're gonna it's in the progress. Thank you. Thanks. I think we can move on, and if there yes. are more questions, uh, we can answer them later. Yes. 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 Sounds good. So okay. So I think I'm gonna move to the other part, which is uh, closely related to our development in this bioimage model zoo. So I'm, I'm gonna not give more details about this, but I will just quickly show you that. Um, so this is the uh, 
collaborative uh, community project, which in collaboration with the Elastic team from Anna Krasuk, uh, Florian Yug, and other groups, many other groups, and for example, the uh, Zero Cost group. So right now we are uh, in an upgrade in the website, but you have the old website as well. And where the idea is that we have this uh, model repository for sharing AI models. So basically you can find a lot of pre-trained models, the ideas that you're gonna download and use it in different software. But one of the key features we want, want to develop is that in the end, you're gonna have this um, button when you can click and run uh, models with the help of Enjoy plugins, right? So I'm gonna quickly show you one example, uh, which is within the uh, human protein Atlas. Uh, let's see if I can do it. Yes, for example, this one. So the idea is to click a button and then you launch an Enjoy plugin directly from the website and then you will be able to uh, run, uh, you know, deep learning models. For example, here is a classification model. When I click predict this new network will be run in the browser. Um, um, yeah, and then you can make prediction on the, for example, where does the protein green channel localize, right? And then you have different classes of prediction. When you click on it, you can also see this attention map of the neural network for, you know, for analysis. So this is just one example. And this is implemented with TensorFlow JavaScript, which means the network runs in the browser. But for most of the other cases, um, a model cannot easily run in the browser. So that's why we want to um, come to our second part, which is a, a um, new developed um, server, what we call the bioengine. So it's basically the idea is to have AI models and uh, applications served from a server. So when we say server, it can be a workstation in your group or a cluster in your institution or just some kind of commercial cloud provider. So basically we provide this um, server software allows you to serve AI models and applications. So the idea is that we're gonna fetch models from the bioimage model zoo. So all the models there are gonna be available eventually. Uh, this is a work in progress by the way, um, but I just want to show it, uh, give you an overview how things work with this. Um, so it also provides web API for model training and inference. So basically you call web API and you don't care about how to, the dependencies, which is often a problematic for installing deep learning software on your own laptop, right? For example, or your own workstation. But in this case, in the bioengine, we manage it for you or bioengine manage it for you. And then you just access the API and you're gonna see demos later. So it support test run models. And for example, as I said, in the model to website, you can click the run button, and then you're gonna run through this server. And it's also run Enjoy applications such that you can build, for example, interactive annotation tool combined with AI models, right? And it's suitable for deploying AI workflows for institutions, facilities, labs, for example, because you can also run your own server and then you can, you know, host a set of Enjoy plugins and they have a fixed workflows. And this is ideal for facilities. For example, you have, you have fixed data, uh, data set types, right? And you can have a list of plugins, for example, segmentation, uh, you know, it's gonna be used a lot and then you can host this kind of a server plus uh, Enjoy applications for your user of facility or your lab, for example. Um, and this, I'm going to show you how, how it works and with mostly focus on this interface where you can open jupyter.mjoy.io, right? So I'm going to share these notebooks later, but for now you just need to, um, you know, look what, what I'm showing you. I think I'm going to use this one. Yes. Um, so, so again, I go back to this, um, so, so the notebooks are gonna be in this folder called BioEngine 2, BioEngine. So this different notebooks, right? Um, if you download it and then you up, uh, you drag and drop to here, right? In the Jupyter notebook, Jupyter Lite, right? Go, go to this jupyter.mjoy.io, right? And then you drag and drop those uh, notebooks files in the second folder 
and then you will be able to run it. So I'm gonna show you how, how it looks. I'm gonna close it first. Um, yeah, so the first one I want to demonstrate is this uh, bioengine. Uh, this is just a name. I'm gonna fix it to, uh, the, to avoid confusion. So you have the bioengine and then here's just a demo and you will see a lot of code, but I'm gonna explain. Uh, so this is just, um, so a few function to help um, because we want to run a classification model. So here, these are the lab predefined labels, right? So you're gonna see later. And, but this is just, and this is a function to fetch images from the human protein analysis website. Um, again, just for demonstration purpose, but you know, in, in case you have a, your local uh, files, you just, you don't need this, but you just read from your disk. Um, and we have this helper function to fetch image from the human protein atlas, right? So if I just run this, when you run this notebook, make sure you have, you see this icon. It means the Mjoy um, extension is loaded, but although in this case, we don't use it, but just to make sure you have that. Um, and then, um, I'm gonna, so here, the first part is that we're gonna fetch an image from the human protein atlas by ID. So this is the image ID. And this is just for demonstration. Again, you don't need to do it if you just use your local data, right? So we just show an image. So this is one cell. We have a large image, but we crop in a small region because this model is gonna only work on a single cell, right? So we're gonna run this classification model. And this model developed by this best fitting is a team from, um, you know, who wins our Kaggle competition in the human protein analysis. But that's just some side information. <laughs> but this is the name of the model, right? And then you're gonna, this is the name of the bioengine server. It's got ai.mjoy.io slash Triton, right? So um, this is a development server. So it might, you might experience some instability for now because we are continuously improving it. But later on, we're gonna provide a more stable server for public use. Um, and yeah, so basically you provide this um, URL for the uh, bioengine server, you provide a name for the model, and then you basically call a function called execute this model. Right, so you just pass this image to the execute model, and then you're gonna just get the classes. If if I run this notebook, just to remind you, this notebook it runs in the browser, right? So it means that itself doesn't have much compute power. But why can we run this uh, Inception V3, which is a pretty big model, is because we run it on the server side. So what? actually happening is that this image is local in your browser or you can read it from your disk right and so but it, this image is gonna send to the server to this server and then it's gonna run this model and it will return with a result with these classes and what you're gonna see is cyto so 0.7.8 this means that okay so this cell the green channel has the probability of a 0 0.78 located in cytosome, right? It's, which is uh, true, right? So this, the same server, it can not only run one model for classification, but it can also run multiple models. So in this case, we just use another model called cell post, right? So I think if you do a lot of uh, uh, segmentation and you must know this, you know, cell pose, which is a new approach um, from the Janita firm. Casting was the uh, first author, and then they developed this cell pose model, which is kind of state-of-the-art segmentation model. Um, so basically, but running it is easy because the model is already on the server, right? Because you just fetch an image, and then again, you just execute this model by, by passing an image. And then you also have a parameter called 30, uh, nanometer, which is a uh, part of the cell post parameter, right? So you just run it and then this is just to display the result. Um, and you can see this input image and then this is segmented mask. 
Um, and again, you just change to another model name. Stardist is just another segmentation model, which has also good performance in, you know, for example, when you have a more concave shapes of cells, and then Stardist is good to use, for example. But again, you just need to know the name and you just pass the data and then you just run this, right? So be, because most of the computation is not done in the browser, so you don't need really kind of a very good uh, server. You can even do it in the browser as we are doing right now. So this is the first demonstration. So hopefully give you a taste on how the bioengine works, right? So basically we have a list of models which we support and the, the list can more grow, right? And later we're gonna link to the bioimage model zoo website such that most of the model in the model zoo gonna be available through this kind of stream. You just need to know the name and then you're gonna be able to call it, right? Um, and so the second demo I want to show you is this training models, right? Training model often considered as much harder problem because it's much more computational demanding. And it's also has, because of that, you will need more, um, you know, because if you only do inference, you can do on G CPU and the speed is okay, right? But if you want to do training, you definitely need a GPU, which is make, make it much harder. There are other solutions like Google Colab and the Jupyter Notebooks. But again, that's, I'm gonna come back to that, some kind of comparison with that. But here I just demonstrate you how to run this training, right? So it's in this specific case, we just use the bioengine to train a model to do um, cell post segmentation, right? So again, so this is just um, a few functions and I'm, I'm gonna just skip this, but this is very similar. So the key part is this train function. Um, again, you just pass the URL of this, um, bioengine server and you pass the model name cell post train and it's not the same as the previous one where we just execute because training is a process which involves a sequence operation right it, it's a it's a sequence of operation because you need a training loop right so that's why we use this uh, called sequence executor uh, from this power how Triton client. So this is a very lightweight client, basically doing HTTP API calls. So we just wrap it with this uh, sequence executor, um, but it's very lightweight. So you get this executor and then you have a for loop to loop over your samples, right? So you have these different samples and then you fit the image and labels, right? So, so basically you, you have your image and then annotated uh, label image, right? So this is the mask with cell ID as the pixel value. Um, and then you send to the server and you call this function called step, right? So you feed the input and then you run a step. So for every image you run 16 mini steps, right? So you set 16 mini steps. So on the server side, each image and labels they're gonna be do date, date augmentation for 16 times. For example, it's gonna randomly rotate the image uh, for 16 times and run 16 iteration of training on the server side within one call, right? If you do one step, it consists of a 16 mini steps, right? And then you just another outer loop, which the epochs, depending on how many epochs do you want to train, you can set this parameter code, how many epochs. Um, and similarly, you're gonna have this predict function, right? Once you train the model, the model is still on the server. You just need to pass the model ID, uh, which you set when you do this training, right? And then you do this prediction. You can use it instantly. So I'm gonna quickly show you this, how, how it works. So this is just, um, uh, we just download some um, sample data set with only four images. We have a train samples and four, four train sample and four test samples. And this is just show one example how it looks, right? So this is the human protein loss images. And this is manually annotated annotations. This is the mask image. 
So in order to do a training, right? So what you can do is that you call this train function and you pass the training samples and then you, you set the epoch, let's say 10, right? And then it's gonna run for 10 epochs and each epoch consists of four samples. Each sample gonna run 16 mini steps in each mini steps. Um, and it's gonna be randomly rotate the image and mask simultaneously for 16 times. And here you're gonna get, see the loss function. You can see how it, how it um, you know, is improving because it decreases, right? So, and you can also set, so like on purpose, I set this uh, pre-trained model to norm, but you can set it to Cyto, which is the standard um, cell post pre-trained model, right? And you can start with a pre-trained model, right? And each time you can um, just train this model and with all the computation down on the server side, here you just control your training loop here. So once it's trained, you can, optionally you can download the model, right? It's gonna generate the web, um, model package in the format of the bioimage model zoo format, right? So it's a, essentially a zip file and you can extract the PyTorch weights and with an additional YAML file, which describe the weights and names, et cetera. So you can basically download model, but because we are running in the browser, we, um, so you don't need to run this. If you run, you're gonna get a memory error because the browser has a limited memory to get this. But if you download this notebook in your own notebook environment, you will be able to download it and uh, write into your disk, the model, and you can use it elsewhere. Uh, but this step is optional because you don't need to download the model in order to use it because the model is on the server, you can just use it, right? So you call this predict function. Uh, you set the same model ID as what you are training and then you just send the data there and then you gonna, you know, train it. So this essentially provide is a model uh, serving, uh, model training service, right? You send your in a couple of examples, annotated examples. You can generate the annotation in Mjoy as we just see before. And then you can, um, oh, I think there's, there's something wrong. I think there were some changes in the code. So essentially it's this um, issue. You just need to remove this, uh, but doesn't matter it finishes, right? So then you can just ignore this arrow. Um, so you can download the model, we can skip, and then you can just use this model to for prediction, and then you can generate the result uh, later on, sorry, <laughs> again. I think it's this. Comment out this, this is where it went wrong, right? So you can just run this prediction. Yeah you got this uh, result, right? And then here, we also get this result. I think it's the same thing, but uh, it's gonna run through all the models one by one and you can see the result here. Um, so I will quickly also show you. So now this, we don't use any Android plugins. I think the more most powerful thing to do is to combine the BioEngine server with the Android plugin because that's the way to enable scalability, right? Because you have computation on the server side and you have you know, your UI in your browser. So this is just a basic demo on how to achieve that. In, so I'm gonna show you how I just made a demo, quick demo I made before. So, so here again, I'm gonna display a few functions, right? So including display image, which is just, helper function to display image in side by side. And then I define this uh, cell post segment function, which essentially does the same, right? This is just another way to call the bioengine uh, in one function instead of two. Before we, I showed you in two functions, but here, this is just an easier way to do it. So basically you pass the URL, you pass the model name, cell post Python. This is the official kind of um, cell post model. And then you pass the image and then you get the result of the mask. So we define this function 
uh, we're gonna fetch an image from the human protein atlas, right? And you can see the image here. So this is the image we are gonna work on. Um, if I just call this function, right, cell post segment, you're gonna get this predicted mask, right? So now what I want to do is that I want to combine this step within the um, Imjoy plugin with Kaibu. So how do I do it? I create a viewer. Uh, I view this image. So I, we see this image. We also add an annotation layer, right? So this layer I'm gonna give me, I, I will be able to do annotation there. Uh, but in this case, we don't, we don't do annotation, but instead we add a button. So this is what, we add a widget and then the type is a button, right? So you have a button called do segmentation. And then you, when you click on it, you're gonna call this function called do segmentation. In the do segmentation, we're gonna call this function called cell post segment, and then you get this mask. Um, and then you can show, convert this mask into a geojson object such that Kaibu can show it again in the viewer. So let's see. This is how it looks, right? So because we added this button, you can see this button, right? And it also loaded this image. So now when I click this button, what will happen is that is call this function and this function will call the bioengine to do segmentation and then call another function to convert the mask image into a geojson object such that we can add show it as another layer in red right so we, we set the color in red right so if i click here this image gonna send to the server and then come back with a mask image the mask image gonna come be able to convert into a red um annotation layer and this is a called prediction right so and you can even edit this right so you can delete this some cells for example if you want you want if you want to edit that uh so but this is give you a basic UI to do segmentation with the server. Um, I'm gonna quickly show you another demo, which essentially do a step further um, to do interactive segmentation. The same process as we did, I showed in this video before, right? So basically you use Kaibu to annotate, send a new annotation to the server to train it and then come back, right? So I'm gonna show you quickly how it works. So this is, the same functions, um, except that now we add a function called train once. So basically you pass an image and label, the model gonna train once. Once means it consists of uh, 16 mini steps, right? On the server side, it's gonna do um, augmentation on the server side. Okay, I'm gonna pass this. And then again, we fetch an image, the same image from the human protein atlas. Uh, again, if you want to read your local file, just read your local file. Um, and if we just call this function and then you just segment, the, it's the same. But now if we just test this train once function to show what it does, right? So it basically, if you pass an image and mask, you're gonna train once. We produce a loss value of the model. And after you can also predict, right? So this is just a test for the, these two function, right? So what really comes together is this Imjoy plugin. So in this plugin, what we did is that we add two buttons. One is do, do um, prediction. In this do prediction function, we call the predict function. We get the mask, we convert in, it into a geojson object such that we can show it in the Kaibu. The idea is that you do a prediction first, and then the user can edit to improve the annotation manually. And then they can take the improved annotation. You're gonna click another button and say train once with this improved version of the uh, annotation, right? So then it's gonna call this function called train once. And this feature gonna send it back to the server called this train once function on the bioengine, you get the loss value if you just run this, right? And uh, for the sake of time, you will not see much, but I just show you how it, how it looks. And so it's first do annotation, right? So let's see if there's anything. I think the model is already good because I, uh, during testing, I have trained it a lot. Just in case, for example, if this one is wrong, you just do some editing, right? Uh, you can just edit 
that notation. Let's assume this is the edit, edit we want, right? Um, you can just say train once, right? Train once means this new annotation gonna send it back to the server and the server can uh, improve a bit, right? And you can do prediction again, this now with the new version, right? So as you can see that you can change to another image, do prediction first, correction, and then train once, you know, do this kind of steps. I will not, I will not show this process, but you know, as you can see that this can just, you can easily do this kind of uh, uh, interactive annotation plugins with this by combining the BioEngine and Enjoy plugins. So I think I'm gonna quickly move to the um, other part, which, um, you know, just, just briefly, what is the difference between BioEngine and Jupyter Notebooks. I think the difference we try to improve, the advantage of BioEngine is that scalability. What I meant is that because the BioEngine, um, if you use Jupyter Notebooks before or use CoLab before, and then you will know that, you know, Jupyter Notebooks is essentially designed for a single user. If your user open kernel is low user GPU, and this GPU is fully occupied, even if you don't do anything, other users cannot use that GPU, right? The same for Colab, and but Colab is a different story because it has Google provide a lot of GPU. But this is, if you, let's imagine you work with private data and you don't want to work with uh, the cloud, right? And GPU utilization is really a problem. So that's why we propose this bioengine to solve this problem. And we solve it because we allow multiple users to share the same GPU and not only multiple users, but also multiple models, right? So you can have many models on the same GPU um, and you can have many users use it simultaneously. Imagine this kind of process, interactive segmentation, right? Because the segmentation process, annotation process is very slow. And, you know, with BioEngine, you can essentially share the same uh, compute infrastructure with many users because the annotation is slow anyway, right? The training is going to take some time, but it is much faster than, you know, human annotation. So basically, it means that multiple users can do annotation simultaneously within this kind of plugin and they share the same server. And the server gonna alternate in between different models, train different models for different users or different groups, for example. Um, and so this is essential allows multi-user, multi-model serving, including training and uh, inference, right? And the other advantage is that Jupyter Notebook and Colab, when you start, you need to wait for some time to install dependencies, et cetera, right? And this is, doesn't need that. We just use it instantly. You connect to the server, send the data, and it get back the result. So there's zero setup time. Um, this is also other advantage. Um, yeah. So yeah. So I think that's it for the main part. But I want to take the rest of some minutes to give you a um, show you another thing which I'm very excited about, which is AI-assisted bioimage analysis. Uh, this is the ongoing work which I've been doing. Um, is the technology is basically enabled by this massive model called GPT-3 and Codex from OpenAI. So this is a natural language processing model, which has 175 billion parameters, which is kind of the largest model uh, ever made, at least you know a few months ago. You know? Um, so this is hopefully give you a taste of future. Uh, I'm gonna quickly do this demo, just a disclaimer. Um, please just uh, pause the recording if you are doing a recording, uh, because this is just the, the policy of the open AI. So we don't, we, we are not allowed to um, record it when we do this demo. So please just uh, pause. Sorry, where can we uh, restart recording? Yeah, thank you. Thanks. So yeah, I, I've been showing you um, bio engine anal uh, bio, sorry, bioimage analysis on the web, the train, and then um, I show you how to make uh, Imjoy plugins built for, and we essentially aim for scalability, interactivity, different 
and we have made this bio engine um, for AI model serving. And then in the end, I also show you this uh, AI CT bioimage analysis, hopefully give you a taste of the future. Um, yeah, so I think this is the end of my presentation. I would like to thank um, the, the most of the work I've been doing is carried out in the cell profiling group headed by Emma Lump at Salab and KTH University. Um, the Imjoy is a project that consists of a lot of uh, users, uh, developers, Florian, Martin, Craig, and uh, uh, many others, right? Um, so yeah, if you are interested, follow us on Twitter. And the BioEngine is not yet released, but it's gonna, but the API is released, but you know, the software itself is not yet released. So stay tuned and follow us on Twitter. We're gonna announce once we have it ready. Um, I also want to thank the OpenAI for providing a beta testing to the GP3 and also Codex model. Um, just to clarify the demos during this talk has not yet been approved by OpenAI. Um, although we are not allowed to record it, but I'm gonna in the for, for future, you know, visitors of this video, we can I'm gonna post another link uh, later to have the same or similar demonstration. Thank you. Thank you. That was great presentation. Uh, really awesome demos. Uh, everyone, please, before you leave, uh, answer the satisfactory feedback survey. We appreciate it a lot. And there is one question uh, that wasn't fully answered. So regarding the chart that enjoy.io, uh, did you mention that if uh, we measure the features uh, on ROIS on an image, then we can see the corresponding image for a specific data point. Um, so sorry, the, the chat, we, what, what exactly? Charts.enjoy.io. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So if uh, you measure the features of an image, then you click on the corresponding, um, on a data point, Will yes. it take you to the image? Can you see the image data? Yes, yes. So that, that's exactly what the plugin meant for, but it doesn't do it. I mean, we don't, the idea of providing that plugin is not to provide something as is, right? So you don't use it, it as is. But uh, the idea is to provide an API which enable the developer to do it. So this is exactly one of the use cases we are aiming for. Just um, for example, in this kind of a case, right? Codex generate this uh, table, right? And we can basically display this table with the Enjoy chat a plugin. And then you're gonna see this interactive plot. And when you click it, and then you go, go back to the individual cell, for example, right? Um, for, for that, and then exactly, uh, Tran, 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 I think she did exactly that, right? For our single cell model, she did some modification to that. When you click on one of the scatter plot dots in this um, chat plugin, and then it's gonna go back to show you the bounding box of this cell, for example, or boundary of this cell, for example. Yeah, but the general answer is yes. Great, thanks a lot. So uh, if there are, no, there are no questions, so we can stop. Uh, Thank you. Webinar here. Sorry, sorry for a bit over time. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Thanks so much for the amazing webinar. I'll stop the recording. Thank now. you.